Nobody ever says, I want to wake up and be a life insurance agent. Right. Actually, a lot of people look at it almost as a scam. Don't necessarily get stifled by like your amount of creativity mm -hmm. or feel like you can't do it because you don't have the budget. Gotcha. There is stuff that you can do that you can, you can do a campaign for a hundred dollars. One of the things that I just burns my butt is brand people talking to people about a color about a logo, <laughs> yeah. about your website. Those are important, but that's right. low-hanging fruit. Right. A prestigious brand is when you walk into the room, people see you. Wait, who are you? You look important. You look like somebody I need to know. They right. don't know your name, but something about you draws them to you. Yeah, you, you use the word decide a lot. Mm -hmm. Most people use the word choose, ah. right? And when you say I choose something, you still have other options in the back of your head. Oh, yeah. But when you say the word decide, you're cutting off from what well, our mentor tells us, cutting off any other uh, uh, option or scenario um, to go any other way. Now, when you coach your clients, do you coach them on like making a decision versus making a choice or like, because I'm just all about getting people over that first hump, yeah. right? So like, can you just give a little insight into like, the, the reason you use that word and, and how you help other women make the, make because those choices. When you say choose, that means there's another option out there. When right. you decide, you give your room, give yourself no retreat. I can't go back to that. Like right. I, it's a decision. I make a decision, then I commit to it. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other options. Like this was do or die for me. So when right. I coach women, it's like okay, you can decide, or you can choose. When you make a decision, we're mm -hmm. going all in. That's what the military taught me. That's right. basically what I'm doing now is just teaching them what I learned in 21 years, being a combat veteran, three right. combat tours. I don't know anything else but battle. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. Not physically fighting, but having right. the war for what I want financially, spiritually, relationally, emotionally. I've had to fight. So I just yeah. teach women how to fight properly mm -hmm. and not just fight, but win. So I mean, obviously you've coached and helped so many women, right? What do you, if you had to distill some of the, like the key, like points, like, Hey, these are the things you must grasp right in order mm -hmm. to win. What are a few of those, like th those points that you would, that really stand out to you for the women that you coach that really just take it to the next level? We call it the ones that realize that the tree has to grow, but it's growing because it has root roots in the ground. Mm -hmm. Some people just want the tree. They just, right. I want the tree. I want the tree. I want all the fruit on the tree, but you look, there are no roots. So I'm teaching them, let's do some, this root work first. Mm -hmm. And that's all mindset. Mm -hmm. Even though they want million dollar companies, I hear it all right. the time. I'm sure you all get it all mm -hmm. the time. Right. I want what you got, bro. I want what you got. I want what you got. Well, yeah. that means you need to do what I do. Come on. No, I want the shortcut. Yeah. You know, shortcuts, you got to right. take the stairs on this. There's no elevator. We're right. taking stairs. Mm -hmm. Some people want the shortcut. So it's more of teaching them. Let's put the roots in the ground mm -hmm. because the roots are growing first, not the tree. It's the right. roots that grow first. They facts. They facts. Yeah. So I'm looking at this, uh, the P3 model that you have. Ah. Can you um give us more insight? It's some homework over here, huh? Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for the for the guests that are as important as you, we have to. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you I know? appreciate it. So can you let us in on, on, on the P three model that you teach to transform? Yeah, a P three model is power, prestige, and profits. Okay. If women or people in business, period, it's not just for mm -hmm. women, but it's the model that I came on board with, or really helping women get to eight eight and nine figures, is yeah. because when you understand what your power is. The day you wake up and you make a decision, this is who I want to become. Mm -hmm. What is the power that you possess? I believe we all were born with it, but some of us haven't tapped into it. And then you go into prestige. It's all about brand. One of the things that I just burns my butt is brand people talking to people about a color, about a <laughs> logo, yeah. about your website. Those are important, but that's right. low hanging fruit. Right. A prestigious brand is when you walk into the room, people see you. Right. There's something about the him that I need to. Wait, who are you? You look important. You look like somebody I need to know. They right. don't know your name, but something about you draws them to you. Right. How, how do you build a prestigious brand? It's about wrap the package. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It is wrap, it's wrap the package. Right. You all have your logo shirts on right now, mm -hmm, right? right? It's all about profit. When mm -hmm. people see you, like, I got to go talk to them. So mm -hmm. obviously they're about their business. Mm -hmm. There's something going on with them. They're just not two brothers walking around talking right. about we're doing this. They're doing something. Mm -hmm. Wrap the package. Whether you're dressing it up or dressing it down, wrap the package. Everywhere I go, uh, I hear these older women call me old money. I get so tickled. Old money to me was an old white lady back in the day. Come yeah. on, be real. Yeah. We saw 
you saw something about yeah. like that's old money. Yeah. Yeah. My kids laugh about that now. Mom, you old money. Not yet, baby. This new money, but old money is coming. <laughs> that's from the grandbabies. Yeah. And then profit. Profits. Mm-hmm. How do you get to your bank? How do you get how do you get the banker to know your name mm-hmm. when you walk in? Hey, Dr. Mm-hmm. Stribling, how are you? I'm good today. What can we do for you? Just come over here, bring you to the side. And it's not just that. It's just right. the profits you bring to your family and to your legacy. Yeah. This is what I love about what you all do. I watch you. I watch you. It's an old people. I watch your chickity talks in your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just the fact that y'all letting us in on game because there are co- conversations that are happening that we're not, especially for women, mm-hmm. but just our culture. We're not part of the conversation. Right. It's not that some of us don't want to be, mm-hmm. but maybe we don't know enough. It's not right. enough just to have an LLC. What are you doing? How many entities do you have? How are you protecting? I had to become a millionaire to learn that. Yeah. Nobody teaches it. So yeah. it is just more about how can you pee through? How can we pee through a woman's life? Love it. Now, to your point, you know, women, you know, they, they grow up and they're, they're taught like, hey, you're, you're supposed to be the nurturer, right? Mm-hmm. How do you help women create this paradigm shift where it's like, all right. I've had this identity of being a woman and a wife and a spouse and I'm letting somebody else lead. How do you help them create that paradigm shift where they can still walk in their power, right? Be this uh, audacious, bold woman while still balancing the fact that they still have, you know, a companion and a family that they, they still care for. Right. Cause I know I, I would imagine that that's kind of a struggle for, for a lot of women. Right. It, it's a, I don't even use the word balance, if I may. I use okay. the word harmony. Okay. And when you harmonize your life, the things that are priority to you come first. I heard you say something. Let somebody lead. Can I Can I just talk to that yeah, for a yeah, second? Yeah. For just, sure. Yeah, we're, I'm working. He's still working on me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I knew, honestly, God sent me the right guy with my encore marriage. Very encore. late. Encore I, marriage. Of course. Come on. I, encore. I love that. Language. I love that. Encore marriage of really laid back, chill. He is not a pushover yeah. at all. Yeah. But he speaks when he, it's, these are his words, not mine. I speak when I need to. I don't have to talk all the time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, who is this dude that has my attention? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. for, I would say I have somewhat of a strong personality, yes. but I'm still a little girl inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're, we're, he sent me someone that understood the power mm-hmm. that I have, mm-hmm. but he never he never tries to take it away, but he stands on who he is and very comfortable in his own skin. Right. He does not care. You, you Sonya to me. You may be Dr. Sonya to the world, but he does it with such grace and ease. I can't even imagine trying to teach that to someone i don't have to teach him anything he just does it naturally and so now it's coming into the space and helping women when they date and even just in business your partner Mm. is important for sure yes because if not he will tear you down or build you back up and you over in the corner sucking on your thumb talking about oh my gosh i want a business i was going to start it i've met many women who close their businesses because of the relationship they were in they got the person who got started with them but they didn't get with the person who's going to help them build along the way Mm. so how do you how do you coach women on that because this is just my opinion some women Correct me if I'm wrong. Go ahead. Go uh, with it. Go some for women it. may value the relationship more than they value their business or their purpose because they've been conditioned to say, like, this success looks like you being a, a housewife, you taking care of the kids, mm-hmm. and the this business is cute, this little thing, mm-hmm. but this is what you're put on this earth to do. And, like, some women have been instilled that. So, like, mm-hmm. I feel like with entrepreneurship, some women can say, like, okay, well, Dr. Sonia, I want to start this business, but I really want to be married and have kids more. Like, how do you balance that? Or do you even coach do you them? Har- how do you harmonize? Yeah, how do you, how, how do you harmonize? Because I feel like a lot of women may use that as an excuse of fear because their mm-hmm. partner might instill that to them. Yes. And if they are fearful, how do you help them, like, get out of that? You know, I believe there's a twofold in there, and I have encountered it. Mm-hmm. Um they are, I do have clients, women that I work with now, some are single, mm-hmm. some are divorced, some are married, some are harmonizing their life. But for mm-hmm. the most part, they're at a mature, not age, but they're a level of maturity mm-hmm. yeah. where either they've been listening to me long enough. I wasn't always a business coach mm-hmm. or well, I would say now a wealth distribution champion. Right. I wasn't always this. I was in the life coaching and divorce coaching first. Yeah. So I had to learn this myself because I grew up on that whole thing, not grew up, but later on, you know, your mm-hmm. husband is a leader and all of that. Mm-hmm. Well, how about I get a partner? Mm-hmm. with this and getting a partner. So I'll have the conversation. I don't harp on it because some of them come that way, but I do have very challenging 
tough conversations and I have one on YouTube now that some women are mad. How are you telling your, I'm not trying to break up a happy home, yeah. but at some point your kids are going to grow up. God forbid your husband leaves you. What else you got? Mm. I'm not saying have something separately, but I believe we all come into this space and place where we need to have something that we focus on that belongs to us. Right. And some women don't want it and it's okay. For someone who maybe doesn't have like the financial resources yet to like, hire somebody to have a team like what are what are some things that they can do on a just a, a fundamental level right to create campaigns that are addictive yeah. right and penetrate penetrate through the noise i think the first thing is like you gotta tap into you right yeah. like the addictive part of that nobody else is doing is something mm -hmm. that's um related to you right mm -hmm. so if you love church girls do you a scripture tuesday you know what i mean yeah. like do you something that relates to you that you can relate to your brand um and we used to do campaigns in the house mm -hmm. right like i want people to understand that we this was the pandemic like all of right, this stuff right. that i was doing was in the house with my iphone me and my partner right mm -hmm. and so the first campaign we did was a birthday campaign mm -hmm. and i literally oh, i remember that one yeah that like i I literally got a um some pancakes from McDonald's. I ordered them. <laughs> I ordered them from Uber Eats. Mm. I uh put the pancakes, uh put some birthday candles in, and I did videos of blowing it out, um giving them different tips. Mm. I put a little background up in the house. Like I did all of this in the crib, you yeah. know. So I'm saying this, and I, I also want people to not use the excuse of I'm not creative. Right, right, right. I go on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And I find pictures uh -huh. and I just recreate them. I literally, like, I send drive like, this the mood board. This is what we going to do. This, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't, I see it visually, but mm -hmm. I have to, like, see it for mm -hmm. me to create it because I don't want to go and have the photographer think that they see what I'm doing. You know, right. like, I need to actually show them, like, this is, a, is an example. Right. So I think those are some of the things, like, don't necessarily get stifled by like your amount of creativity mm. or feel like you can't do it because you don't have the budget. Gotcha. There is stuff that you can do that you can, you can do a campaign for a hundred dollars, mm. but I also want people not to get caught up on just the concept. You remember that was only phase two. It right. was eight steps. Yeah. The concept ain't the campaign. The strategy yeah. is the campaign, right? right. Like, so you got to keep doing the rest of the steps to get people to stop scrolling too. 1000%. So do you feel like, there are seasons for marketing strategies or campaigns, or do you feel like, like there, you, you can do the same marketing all year? Cause like, you know, back in the day, I feel like social media was so easy to market on in mm -hmm. 2020 because everybody was in their phone. Right. right now, Instagram is not going to push your content out to that many people right, right. now. Cause they're trying to recoup their money from ad spend. Right. So like, do you feel like there are seasons from, for different marketing campaigns? And if so, what have you seen like for the last three to six months that has really been working from a campaign standpoint? I think from a campaign standpoint and and i say campaign right uh -huh. like we use the word campaign but a campaign is nothing but a launch okay, right yeah, yeah, yeah. and so the definition of a campaign is the organized course of actions to achieve a goal it didn't say anything about like their creativity it didn't say you spend mm -hmm. money it just said you need to be organized and have a goal right mm -hmm. so i say that to say you should always be in campaign regardless right and the only difference that i've seen in the last three months three to six months is like you just have to show up more Right. Mm -hmm. Because they are not they're not showing it to everybody at all at all. At all. Right. So instead of me um, thinking like, oh, I could just post one time a week, like I got to keep mm -hmm. I got to stay on their necks because I don't know when my stuff going to get shown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let me just keep going. And then I have to be creative. I have to also be adaptable. I think mm -hmm. when people think about social media marketing, they're just not adaptable enough. Mm -hmm. It's always changing and you have to keep testing stuff out like there is one season that TikTok may do well or Instagram or Facebook or whatever. You just got to be able to roll with the punches. That, ma that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, one thing that I was thinking about is like, so there's so many people who like, they say, I'm not a, I don't like being in front of the camera. And they might have a great idea. They might have a great product. They might have a great service. But then you do think of people like Phil Knight who own Nike and no one knows who Phil Knight is, but they know who Jordan and Serena is. Right. What would you say to the entrepreneur who has a great product, has a great service, but just it just isn't in their personality they feel like to be in front of the camera yeah so i think it depends right one this might not sound nice but i don't think everybody should own the beast you know what i mean like you yeah, know yeah, coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i don't think every, you know everybody I mean? should yeah. not own the business we can all we can all agree that and say you know, that. Like, yeah, everybody don't have to own the business what's up family are you ready to make more in 2024 i'm talking make more money 
pay less taxes, and get access to more capital? If so, I want you to join our 100% free masterclass where we're going to be teaching you all of these strategies so you can keep more money in your pocket and you can make your money make money for you. So if you want to be a part of this amazing free class, all you have to do is click the link below and save your spot. The problem is we only have 50 seats. So I will pause this episode, go register and come back to it after so that you can save your seat for this masterclass. Other than that, I'll see you inside the class. Let's get back to the episode. But you can invest in a business if you have to ask yourself, and people may not want to hear this, mm. but you have to ask yourself, like, if I don't want to be in the camera, in mm, front that's of the a good camera, perspective. Mm. and I don't have no money to invest in somebody to be in front of the camera, that part, then what are you going to do? Yeah, nothing. So why not just invest in somebody else's business, mm -hmm. right? Like, come on, if you're more strategic person. See somebody's business and become their COO, or mm. like tap into them, and then you can, you can have your it. business within somebody's business. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So why do you have to own a business if mm. you have nothing to give to this business? Yeah, you know what I mean. And yeah. that's kind of my perspective because I do understand like you can have the influencers and the, mm -hmm. but you gotta have money for that. And yeah, most people that start businesses don't have bread. Mm -hmm. So it's like... And if you're not you, willing to get in front of you in the camera... Then it's like, just yeah. don't do it. The way, I, the way I always look at it is like, you know, do it to the extent of like being able to leverage yourself. Like I, even, I literally sent you a voice note on this, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I understand that we got to penetrate the noise. I understand that there's... Because my business is so financial driven, like right. it only makes sense for me to go crazy on content next right. year, right? And like leverage myself. Tell right. him. Right. Tell him. Yes. Okay. Yes. I am uh, the CEO, man. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, but, but to leverage my business, like, I, th th these are the things I know, right? Yeah. But it's like, at the same token, I don't feel like we would have been able to do what we've done over the past several months if I didn't, like, dig deep on, like, infrastructure. No, 1,000%. 1,000%. Yes, right? yeah. um, but I know now that we have, I feel confident. But 2024. Yeah, I feel yeah. confident okay. now. That, okay, cool. Like, now I'm going to leverage myself, yeah. right, to be able to do this. So I think it's like, at minimum, you have to be willing to leverage yourself to get the business to a certain point. And then yeah. I do think there's a there's a there's an inflection point where you can have more ambassadors or spokespeople right. who can lead and you can kind of like, you know, fade to the fade to black. But if you're not willing to do that for the business that you say you care about, yeah. then I think, you know, what are we talking about? No, you and right. you shouldn't. And it's okay. Like I understand that you don't like the camera, right? right? But like you said, if you're not willing to leverage yourself, then what what other options do you have? You don't have the money to hire nobody. Yeah, I, so it's like, what other options do you have? If you don't like camera, you don't you don't like money. Like I, I just tell, like, I don't even give them excuse. Like if you don't want to yeah. get the camera, then you don't you don't want money because if they don't know you, they can't flow you, yeah. right? If they don't know who you are, how can they pay you? Right. So it's extremely important to get in front of the camera as much as possible yeah. to be able to sell your product. Unless you got money to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So speaking of that, free media versus paid media. Do you, mm -hmm. what's your um. Uh, perspective on that, like how much free media is somebody be doing, to, you know, as far as content to build lists and how much, or when should people start paying for ads? And do you have a, a kind of opinion on how you would coach somebody if they came to you and say, Marisha, I do kind of free content, you do paid ads, and what's the split and how do I, you know? It goes back to that million dollar plan, okay. right? So when you think, when our million dollar plan maps out how many customers that you need. Okay. And then it says how much website traffic that you need and okay. then how many people need to see your marketing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at this amount of website traffic and we're looking on your Instagram and the analytics is telling us that you only getting X amount of people to see your marketing, X mm -hmm. amount of people to go to the website, you don't have any relationships to leverage. You only have the only other option is to buy traffic, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's my reality point for a lot of entrepreneurs because when I do that million dollar plan with them, they like, I ain't doing enough. Like, mm -hmm. that's why I'm not making the goals that I said I want to make. Yeah, you can say you want to make $100,000, but did you have enough traffic for that? Right. And so that's when you understand, like, when do you do bill, borrow, buy? So let's do exercise okay. if you're willing to do it. So I. I'm a business owner. Yes. I want to make $100,000 on this next launch. Okay. My product is $1,000. Okay. Right? So. Give my little cash. Yeah. That's, all, that's hey. like that, that'd be a dope exercise, right? For the audience, cool. right? Yeah. Right? So I, I, I want to make $100,000 on this launch. Um, my product is $1,000. So I okay. need to sell, what, 100 units or 1,000 units? 100 units? What's that? Add the zeros? $1,000. I thought y'all was the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100, 100, 100 units. 100 units. 100, 100, 100, 100. Yeah, yeah. Y'all know. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> to be honest, I, we, we aim for way higher than our launches. So, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, I want to have a $100,000 launch. My product is $1,000. Okay. And I, you know, have 10,000 followers so I don't have I don't have a big audience, and maybe my maybe my I'm only being able to organically reach ten thousand people a month. 
Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. So, and I'll break it down. So, that means you need 100 people to buy your products, mm-hmm. right? So, the conversion, the average conversion rate is between 1% and 3%. Okay. For okay. $1,000 products? No, just uh, period. Okay, period. Period. Okay. So, let's just say 1% to be safe, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, that means we need 10,000 people to come to the website, right? Okay. 10,000 people need to come to the website. So that a hundred of them give you a thousand dollars. Okay. Got it. So then now the next thing is like how many people need to see your marketing? And so we use that same conversion rate across the board, right? Uh-huh. So if you are that's one percent, so I need a million people to see my marketing. <sighs> right? You only got ten thousand followers. So now we can go in the back end and see your impressions on the average of a month if the campaign is for a month, right? And we say, okay, you posted 30 times during the month. You reach 10,000 people, that ain't enough. You know what I'm saying? We're going to need you to post 60 times so you can reach 20,000 people. And then we're going to minus that. And we're going to say, we got, we still got 980 left. So you got some bar traffic. You got a friend with some followers that you could post on and go live with. You got a podcast you could go on. You got something else you can do. No? Okay, we're going to have to spend money. I went to Howard and have a degree in finance. So I've always been into money, how it works. Mm -hmm. Um, But what ended up happening is obviously when the market crashed and Mm -hmm. they were cutting marketing out, that's the first thing that goes. Everybody wants sales, but they get rid of marketing first. And so I thought that I needed to get into a space that was Mm recession-proof. And finance always is recession-proof because people always need to check on their finances, whether things are going up or down. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up getting into the life insurance um, industry. Mm-hmm. And the thing about life insurance, nobody ever says, like, I'm going to, I want to wake up and be a life insurance agent. Right. Actually, a lot of people look at it almost as a scam. Mm-hmm. But if you really know the industry, the financial mm-hmm. services industry, the most millionaires are made from being in a financial, in the financial industry. Mm-hmm. Um not I'm not talking about people who own businesses, but just people in general who right. are millionaires and people just don't understand the space. Right. So I got into this space because I thought that this was going to be a space where I didn't have to clock in. I was going to be able to make whatever I wanted to make based off of what I do. And I've mm-hmm. always been a person. I've never had a nine to five job. Always wanted to be able to make money based off of what I do. Um, And now after listening to you guys, processes and everything and scaling, now I'm on something else. (laughs) Yeah, you just just want some masterclasses. I'm on on something else now, but that is why I originally got into the business. Got you. And so I feel like people understand it from a conceptual level, right? Life insurance is, you get it, something happens to you, your family's taken care of, right? So like from your, if, if someone didn't know anything about life insurance. And, and they're walking into your office and they say, hey, I've seen all the stuff online about life insurance. I, I just had a new baby. I'm a successful business owner, sole owner, I mean, sole a provider for my household. I'm married, trying to set the whole, that whole situation up for you, right? Like, what is the conversation that you would have with that person about life insurance and the importance of it and the role that it could play in their life? So the biggest thing that I do that I think is probably really different from other Mm -hmm. agents is I'm going to put this in a perspective that this is going to be a financial tool for your life in in general. Mm -hmm. So first we're going to step back and ask, I always ask, what's your goals? What, Mm -hmm. where are you now and where Mm -hmm. do you want to be? So I need to know what is it? Are you planning on starting a business? Are you planning on investing? Do you own real estate? Mm -hmm. Um, Are you in debt? What does the expenses look like in your household? Mm-hmm. What would you like your kids to do? What do you want to leave them behind? What's the legacy you want to want to provide for your family? And from there, I'm mm-hmm. now going to put a strategic plan together. Because what people don't know about insurance is it's called life insurance because you actually can use it while you're alive. Mm-hmm. It's not just something where when we die, we get paid out. Right. But when we talk about us as a people, the problem is the disconnect with life insurance is going to be that 
they haven't ever received any money before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I actually never thought about that. That's yeah. why. Okay, That's that the so disconnect. If you right. think about other cultures, they're getting money from grandparents passing away, great grandparents passing away. Yeah. We crazy. are not yeah, receiving the money because we're almost the first generation that's really starting to Figure say, let me get this insurance policy and keep it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we're also one of the biggest communities to purchase life insurance over five and six times because we keep letting it lapse. Mm. And so we keep getting less and less of a death benefit because we're getting it at an older and older age and it's costing more and more money. So now we're really not leaving nothing behind. Right. So what I say to this family that comes into my office is I say, we're going to put a plan together and we may not be able to do everything today. But we're going to start the plan. And as your income grows, we're going to grow our process. We're going to grow the insurance that matches with that. And we're going to cover all your goals and make sure that we're creating assets for you and your family while you're alive and when you die. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that what you just said is remarkable because I don't think I've heard anybody else say that the reason why our culture is so against life insurance is because we never received it. Right. right, like so we don't have an emotional we, we, connection. Yeah, we don't. You know, we believe that it could actually work for us. And that just for me, so my father passed away when I was sixteen. I'll never forget. Um, he had the life insurance through his job, which is a trash plan. Yeah. So it was like twenty five thousand dollars in life insurance to pay for his funeral and to get split up amongst three siblings. Right. So we got like four thousand dollars each, and right. I was like, my What's father this? just passed like a fourth. Of, I'm doing right. four thousand dollars. You know what I'm right. saying? And so. I just realized that the prior reason why I was jaded, um, to, you know, to, to think that life insurance wasn't something that was immediately necessary. If I would have got a hundred thousand, if we would have got a hundred thousand dollars each, yeah, it would have been a different story. Imagine getting a million right. tax free, tax free, a check. Your bank account might have been at five grand. It's at a million and five grand. Do you understand? I think we're not really letting people feel mm -hmm. what it would. Be if this was to happen because I've had people say to me nobody left me anything so mm -hmm. I'm not leaving my kids anything and I'm right. like mm, crazy. what, yeah. what? Yeah. because I don't understand just because you didn't get the feeling why you don't want to leave the feeling behind right yeah. so I think that one of the other issues are there's too many people talking about life insurance that are not licensed don't know nothing about it mm -hmm. have not experienced receiving the money and they're giving these opinions and people are thinking that they're facts. Right. So one of the things is I have a mentorship where I mentor agents. And one mm -hmm. of the things I teach them is, listen, you want to treat these people like as if it was your family. And so if that's the case, you need to make sure that they understand the feeling of what they're doing, what this is going to do. And mm -hmm. so one of the things I think with all of these opinions, you got people telling you, Buy term investor rest. You got people telling you you don't need insurance. You have people saying insurance is a scam. All mm -hmm. of these things. And I, you know what I tell them? I say, guess what? That's your family and your issues. I'm going to tell you this. When I pass away, mm -hmm. my daughter's going to get over $8 million in life insurance money. Mm -hmm. And she also has her own policies that were going to be paid up that my grandkids will receive money for. Mm -hmm. I've used my insurance when I've had hardships. I've used my money to renovate my house. Mm -hmm. I've used my money for so many different things. She's about to go to school. If I need to, I will dip mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I've experienced it. So mm -hmm. I don't understand what's the scam part about right. it. I don't understand why you would tell me to buy term and invest the rest when half half of us are not investing. Right. They're buying the term. Yeah. They're not doing the other side of it. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can't tell our community that because right. they don't understand investing. So even they see all these things about doing everybody can't have a George mm -hmm. in their pocket and be able to because that requires minimums. And a lot of people don't have $250,000 minimums to dump into an account every year. So they got to figure it out themselves. Yeah, and yeah. that's where I come in as a life insurance agent, as a broker. I come in and I tell them, listen, we can do all these things that you want to do, but it's going to take some sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You have to pay a premium. Right. You got to stop telling me that you want $200,000 in cash value in your policy next year with a $100 budget, $1,200 a year, $2,400 in two years, and you want a $200,000 return. 
as, mean, as a new kid say, the math ain't math, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not math. Yeah. I mean, George, if you know something. I, I, nah, I mean, I if you know something, let I, me know. I, don't I, know no I got 200. Yeah. <laughs> to give me that I, all, all I know is that I don't I know. know about it. <laughs> yeah. But I, here, here's what I think the disconnect is, honestly, Lindsay. I think what the disconnect is, you know, and this is in all of our industries, not just life insurance, but if people get on the internet and they'll, they'll speak to all these possibilities on what can happen, right? And so, so on the show, I would love to break this down, but like you hear people say, if you get a policy and you structure, you get a properly structured life insurance policy, but no one ever talks about the proper, proper structure. structure. Right? <laughs> right? It's like, okay, well, show me, don't show me the illustration on the theory. Cause, cause I actually come, I started out on the insurance world. I was right. a top agent for Mass Mutual. They still use my name to recruit black people to this day, right? But my point is, it's like, if we can just educate people, right, beyond the sound bites and like, hey, yes, life insurance can be a powerful tool. Yes, you can use life insurance to become your own bank. But here is what it looks like because right. people are so misinformed and they don't understand. And it's not about, it's not bad that there are premiums associated with it, that there are fees associated with it because that's anything. But it's like, let's not oversell and undereducate, mm -hmm. right? So what I would love for you to do is to break down how the policy needs to be structured, right? And what it actually looks like to leverage it in real life. I love that because you're right. People just need to know the steps. Right. So if you are looking to get a become your own bank, infinite mm -hmm. banking, this concept, mm -hmm. the first thing you need to understand is it's going to require a commitment. Right. It is life insurance and you must pay for the premium. Mm -hmm. There are two policy types that you can use mm -hmm. to do this concept. It's either going to be universal life or it's going to be whole life. Mm -hmm. Now, both of these types have multiple variations and some of them are going to get you to your goals faster but again mm -hmm. goes back to budget right. so you're going to first choose either you will mm -hmm. or you're going to get a whole life policy okay after you do that you're going to want to maximize this policy's cash value growth so that you can reach these goals mm -hmm. so that means if your premium is let's just say two hundred dollars a month maybe you're going to dump in 350 a month because you're trying to maximize the growth and the cash value. So that means, again, more commitment. The more commitment you give, the more money this policy is going to grow. But there is something called a MEC, a modified endowment contract. Right. So if you go over this number, that means the IRS deems this uh, an investment and it becomes mm -hmm. taxable. Mm -hmm. So we want to stay under the MEC if you are somebody who is going to use the money. If you're mm -hmm. transferring wealth and you ain't touching it, then it doesn't matter if the policy works. Right. But if you want to use this, this policy, then you want to make sure we stay under the MEC. So we're yeah. going to do, we're going to overfund this policy right under the MEC. So your insurance agent should be able to structure the policy mm -hmm. and be able to make certain amounts of money be able to be dumped into the policy. Mm -hmm. After that, we're going to take money out Mm -hmm. For things that are going to be an asset. Mm -hmm. This is where people get it wrong. Big facts. You have to take the money out. Let's say you're purchasing a property that's 50000 mm -hmm. and it may need 20000 in renovations. So you're at 70000 So we borrow 70000 from the policy. Mm -hmm. And now we sell this policy six months later for one fifty. You need to pay the 70000 back. Mm -hmm. The goal of this thing is to repeat the process as you keep adding on assets. You're you're growing your assets, but your policy is becoming whole. Yep. So mm -hmm. you're creating a bank per se, but the bank has to be funded. 